What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to do Volume Two of Batman Outlaws by DC from DC Comics, played by Paul Gulacci, Doc Monk, who's the writer, right? And you know what I think about Doc Monk? He's the best, along with Paul Gulacci, Little Will Schubert, Inker, Charlie Yoakum, etc., etc. Now, this comic is from the 2000s, but it's still, yeah, for me, it count, counts as a little bit as a 90s comic because this story is so deep and dark. Um, this is more one of the most serious Batman storylines I've ever read, and it proves that, you know, modern comics are shit compared to the stories what they produced back in the day. So, bear with me because there's a lot to cover here. So, Batman and the Bat Family here is being, you know, they are basically outlaws. They're being hunted by a, a group of special forces because they think they are terrorists and all that stuff. And, you know, the, the city of, well, the, the high-ups gave them permission to hunt down the outlaws, right? And um, so Gordon and um, Bullock here, they goes to this facility and they do not like what, uh, what the Blackhawks are doing, you know, and the leaders called... Redman, right? And Redman is uh, so they go into this military base, and uh, so Redman, Redman is here, and he says, uh, "Here you are, Colonel Redman, former visitor center. I take it you're two minutes late, Commissioner. More than enough to drum you out of any squad under my command." But he says, "Well, my apologies. I was just admiring your black helicopters, right?" But that's more sarcasm because he doesn't like, uh, they don't like each other, right? So, and he looks like a typical Bond villain. I like that. And um, anyway, so he has some sarcasm and he, this guy doesn't like that. And he says, um, hey, good thing not that I'm not in your squads. But you are on my com under my command, Gordon. And I trust you receive my info pack. Nothing classified, of course, but I believe in sharing whatever I can with the locals. Purely as a courtesy. Or to see, I believe. So he's boasting in return, Gordon, and in the same spirit of cooperation, I'm demanding and complete assurance on every vigilante incident and sighting on the city to date. Everything you got on the Batman and his unauthorized accomplices. And I mean everything, Gordon. If no such dossiers exist, then you will compile one immediately, personally, and make it good, Gordon, or you do it again. That's all. So yeah, uh, Batman, I mean, Gordon doesn't take shit from this guy. And he says, hey, set up a meeting with the Batman. And then we have a talk with the Bat family. So, and then we see this shot here with the Batman. I like when they call him the Batman. Uh, Robin, Huntress, um, Nightwing, and Batgirl, right? They go into this rooftop here, meeting with Gordon. And Batman says, hey... Uh, it wasn't easy to get here. I mean, the Bat family says that. But, you know, it was important. And then uh, we see this cool-looking ass shot. Look at this. I mean, there's all these cool-looking gargoyles. And um, Gordon says we have 18 minutes before, uh, you know, the Blackhawks you know, doing their, you know, roundups because he has the timetable of those um, schedule. And he says, um, what do you got, Gordon? So Gordon says... Um, he thinks that Redman could be right about this whole vigilante thing. And there was a time that I didn't like vigilantes. They're outside the law, and that makes them outlaws, even when they serve the law, even when they help me help the city. Talking about Batman, of course. It cuts both ways, Gordon. If outlaws can serve the law, then lawmen can break it. Of course. Dirty cops are almost all this crime. And... Um, so Batman says, hey, um, you're talking about David Adley Redman. He is FEI, not a cop. And the Foreign Intelligence Agency, FEI, is expressively forbidden by charter to engage in domestic operations. Redman was FEI, but he, he's an appointee on the Justice Department now. Um, so Redman says, we are on very murky waters. Um, which I couldn't clear, Robin, even if I wa wanted to. And he says, Batman says, hey, what do you want us to do? 
Same thing I've always done. Keep the people of the city as safe as I possibly can. And refuse to believe in consorting with vigilantes in the process. Uh, at least in your case. Right now, there's, we're nothing but targets and they're shooting to kill. So Batman of uh, Gordon says, well, you don't know, don't know for sure. But, you know, Robin confirms that, that they are actually shoot to kill. Right. Um, even Huntress chimes in. And um, so Gordon says, um, fear and adrenaline can weigh heavy on a trigger. And whether you like it or not, you're a scary bunch. So Huntress says, well, yeah, that's that's what we do. It's our edge. My point exactly. But on the other hand, Redman and his task force make my blood boil. With good cause? Who knows? Maybe I'm making it personal. Maybe it's my fault. Is it? No. Redman may be in the right, but only technic technically. Techn but only technically? Is that how you say it? doesn't matter. Shooting to kill or not, his blood hawk hawks are turning the city into a war zone, posing far more danger than you. So Batman asks again, what do you want us to do? Obey the law, but also help the friend who's helped me. Can you do both? I'm trying, but obeying the law and cooperating with Redman and helping you means subverting him. Not if he's the real outlaw. What do you mean? I don't have proof, but this vigilante crackdown is just a smokescreen to eliminate us. A cover-up. Of what? So Batman doesn't, uh, you know, is sure, but he needs to figure it out. Uh, but it seems that Huntress has a hunch. Um, she said it wouldn't be the first time when uh, FIA forged a dark alliance with the mob for drug smuggling assassination of foreign leaders, maybe even some of our own. And Gordon says, well, that's a conspiracy theory, right? And um, so, but Batman says, well, it could be the FII itself. To do what? Protect themselves from something they think we know, ensure the continuing existence which was threatened by the late Senator John Kirk. So yeah, late Senator John Kirk was shot by someone, by a, you know, a lowly, low-life guy. Batman stopped him. Uh, but Batman is not convinced that he is actually the shooter, right? And um, so Gordon says, "Did really? do you really think FIA assassinated? Um he says, it wouldn't take the whole agency, Gordon, just a few rogue agents, maybe one of high-ranking official, like Redman, precisely like him. But we know who killed Senator Kirk. You captured Henry James Lucas himself. I captured a deranged loner willing to plead guilty to a deed he couldn't remember. Yeah, that's a setup. Uh, as you then can see here, I believe the, the Bloodhawks found targets. Uh, but Batman and Gordon don't know that yet. So, so they talk a little bit more about you know, um, you know that that shooter you may be being controlled or drugged or being set up, right? Yeah. You're serious, aren't you? And now that Lucas is conveniently dead, we never know. But he wouldn't be the only setup in this mess. So Batman asks, "What do you mean?" I was giving dossiers on the Bloodhawk commandos purely as a courtesy, Redman claimed, as we heard earlier. But Bullock vetted two of them. They checked out big RSDMV, Social Security's military records, every federal. But the small private markers, phone bills, mortgages, library cards, none, nothing for either one. They exist, but not officially, not in the real world. They are cutouts, setups. Mystery man with tailor-made IDs. Legends, Commissioner and Spy Speak. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of going on and I like that, you know, because this is like, it goes very deep into conspiracy theories that I haven't read before in, you know, a Batman comic, not as deep as this. The Bloodhawks are moving silently because they have some kind of a silent mode, right? And... Um, if this operation is legit, legit, le legitimate, legit, you know what I mean, legit, legitimate, legitimate, legitimate. Jesus Christ! Sorry, my English is sucks. Uh, Go on. Why would you Redman need to cover agents? And why would he give you any dossiers, even as a courtesy? 
So he says, yeah, I don't know either. So I'm giving you this. Maybe you can cover some more. But then all these dots are coming. And uh, yeah, it's action time, guys. And what a great action it is. So yeah, they're being smoked out by the Bloodhawks. And uh, they need to get the hell out of here, man. And like I said, all these cool looking shots here. I mean, um, uh, Huntress is diving into some kind of a building and this helicopter following her into the building and then outside of the building, which is really cool. They're shooting rockets at the buildings. And um, yeah, uh, Batman tried to evade that and says to Gorn, hey, uh, you need to, to get down because they didn't know that you are here and there's also these flying um jetpack guys so batman you know grabs one of them and uh taking one down and he's then stealing the jetpack um and robin i mean sorry uh nightwing i, I still call him robin sometimes uh does that too but he doesn't steal the the, the jetpack and um so yeah, the enemy is uh finding out who are where are these uh where our, our heroes are and he, and he says Kill them, nail them, nail them. And then, and, 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 you know, the shooting at, at Nightwing and needs to get out of here, right? Uh, meanwhile, uh, Batman has that equipped his um, jetpack. And um, so uh, he says to, uh, to Gordon, hey, you need to get out of here uh, because you risk already too much by giving me the, the personal files and dossiers. And then, uh, oh, no. <laughs> Batman flies these jetpacks and basically it's more like an, uh, a ruse, you know, like a, like a distraction uh, leading the Bloodhawks away from the rest. And we see this gorgeous looking art, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Architecture of Gotham. Looks really cool. Colors are nice too. Uh, so yeah, uh, these guys get away. Batman ditches the, um, the jetpack because it's you know, getting a little bit too hot under his feet. Dives into the, the river or the bay, escapes. But then, oh no, uh, only um, Robin is here, right? Because, you know, we see this all the rubble. Uh, Robin is taking out these guys because, you know, he's great. Uh, but then this is happening. And before they can shoot him, uh, he's being saved by Cassandra, you know, a bad girl. Um, I'm very unfamiliar with this version of Bad Girl. Maybe I should look into that, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not sure how good this comic is with her. I need to take a look at that. Anyway, so uh, look at this great detail on this costume. Awesome. Anyway, so and then they do this handshake, which reminds me, has nothing to do with this book, by the way. But when I saw this, I thought, oh, did you uh, saw the Batman, uh, you know, from 1966 TV series that has a lot of reruns and then there was some kind of a mini cartoon as an intro and then Batman and Robin, you know, shake fists, uh, shake, shake fists, shake, shake hands at the end and then this, the, 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 the TV series started to, to air. You know, that was, this was great. It reminds me a little bit of that. Anyway, so they escape too, right? So uh, Bruce is getting back to the Batcave and then we get more investigation batman being the, the detective with the help of oracle i like that you know we don't we don't see that much um so it seems that she has analyzed the um the info on the on the on the disc and she said it's all fake and uh, etc it's false but the photos were real right so he she says rough customers everyone all mercenaries with nasty involvement in past covered operations. Does the Justice Department know, says Bruce? They must know who, block ho who the Bloodhawks are, but they might, may not be aware of Redman's true agenda, otherwise known as hunting our butts into oblivion, right? Um, anyway, so, um, so Bruce says, what about the seven sound spikes? Yeah, because of the shots, there were just, you know, sounds of the shot, it's been heard, but Bruce figured out, or maybe it was an oracle, that it was another sound in the background, possibly another guy that shot a gun or a sniper to kill the target, you know, the senator. And the other guy that Batman caught is the one that has, you know, been, you know, taking the fall, right? Um, but there was some, some trouble with the spikes uh, going out and, and they kind of really identified what she says... Um, 
If all three shots were fired from the same position by the same shooter, Henry, James, Lucas, or anyone else, then the echo pattern would also be the same. And it multiplies of three, six, nine, or 12. You know, multiply by three, right? Echoes. But seven spikes don't add up. At least one other gun firing from a different position with a different echo pattern, maybe no detection detector echo at all. Yet Lucas' rifle had been fired. Yes, but when during the assassination or an hour or two before, there were free spin cartridges on the floor beneath Lucas's window, says Bruce. Yeah, but then they do some detective stuff that um, there were no fingerprints on the cases. And she says, the bullets themselves could not be linked to any rifle since they were designed to fragment on impact. Not standard for Lucas's clip. So did he hand load it there wearing gloves or did someone else? Another gunman. Maybe two or three. Probably members of the Redman team. And they got away, leaving the range lone assassin Lucas to take the fall. That's my analysis. Uh, but it won't help hold up in court. Um, so Batman, you know, donning his costume and, you know, uh, wants to go to the place, you know, to the uh, uh, location where the helicopters are. But then we see uh, Catwoman because Redman and his, one of his goons talk about what happened and that they couldn't, you know, kill anyone. You know, don't, you know, kill Batman and his friends. And she is recording all of this talk here, right? Um, you know, that he wants to kill the Batman and all that stuff, right? And um, etc. So it's now all on tape, which is cool. So and then we see Bullock and Montoya and uh, basically they are, you know, arguing if Batman is really on the good side of the law, but Bullock vouches for him and he says, well, he may be uh, in real life a cop because we are doing this for pay and he is doing that of his own free will and all that stuff. I like that. Uh, so Batman comes here and this is chapter four, Project Afterlife. And before he can do anything, Catwoman comes in and he says, and she says, uh, um, I'm here with the same uh, thing in mind as you do. I got videotapes and audio proof that you need to swat the blood hawks out of Gotham's sky, she says. Obtained with a dose of their own medicine, extremely highly quality surveillance equipment, right? And she says, um, use them to take the gung-ho bozos down so you and I can both get back to business. After all, I'd much rather be swooped by you. And Batman says, <laughs> I like that. So yeah, so they are listening back to these tapes. And then um, the girl says, Hey, we can got get up. We cannot give up now, sir. Not with Project Afterlife potentially compromised. And enough slates. I told you never to think those words, let alone speak them. All right. What is Project Afterlife? I'm curious, right? So, um, so Batman says we cannot use this because it's illegally obtained, Robin, and admissible in court. So yeah, although they have proof, they cannot use it. That's cool, right? So. They need to build a case here. Oracle, run a check on Project Afterlife. And um, so, yeah, they need to figure out what to do next. And um, and she's and uh, basically uh, he says, well, maybe you should go to Oracle and give them those tapes that she can, you know, analyze and all that stuff, right? And um, so, oh, wait a minute, I got some package. Why did, Jesus. All right, guys, <laughs> I got a package with comics. What a great way to do a live review and then we're getting interrupted, but you know, <laughs> Where was I? Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so um, another meet with Huntress. 
Yeah, she's getting hyper again. She's tired of being Hunter Robin, sick of hiding. She wants to take action, and at this point, I don't blame her. You defending Huntress? Wow. But she must kept in line. Of all of us, of us all, she comes closest to Redmond's professed target. A vigilante out of control, reckless and dangerous. Anyway, so um, Nightwing comes to um, Oracle and uh, he says, burn, Cyber Lady, burn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was weird. Anyway, so he gets out of there, but then he's getting shot. I mean, this, this well, his, his bike explodes and this, unfortunately, this innocent guy is getting killed. And it seems that the Bloodhawks has find Robin. And look at these cool, you know, cyberware um, clothes that they have straight out of 2000 AD, uh, somewhere in the future. It looks awesome, right? And uh, they, they, they hit a civilian and killed him. And yeah, action is ramping up. And I like that, you know, there's some downtime, there's some action, there's some downtime, there's some investigation. That is, there's some action. And all of these action looks cool, you know, with all this very kinetic way of storytelling visually right from different perspectives and all that stuff and people panicking and then you know a sense of urgency it's all in here it's it's great so yeah um uh nightwing is getting boxed in and but then robin does uh, i'm sorry nightwing does this i don't know what these things are compartment boxes what are they it's look metal i don't know what that is but it looks cool right so these guys have been taking out uh, but he's still getting followed and shot from left to right, right? And uh, but um, Nightwing thinks, "Hey, um, you killed uh, you killed guys. Uh, you did. You're going down for manslaughter. It's up to Commissioner Gordon and his district attorney. But either way, an innocent citizen is dead, and the Bloodhawks are finished. And also, we see reflections in windows, which." They don't do that anymore in modern comics <laughs> because that's too much effort. Anyway, <laughs> so this old woman says, uh, go, lady, and don't stop. And um, gone? Give me a comm unit. Encryption level nine. Bloodhawk slates to Commander Redman. We, have, we could have a serious problem, sir, unless we spin it to our, our advantage first. All right, so talking about, you know, killing an innocent guy. Um... So they turn on the radio later when they all meet up. And um, so the radio says, um, still an unidentified motorist was caught up in expectant violence while parking his car. According to the Justice Department spokesman, the death was caused by, quote, the reckless action of a fleeing vigilante, one of several still being sought in Gotham. That's a lie. I tried to prevent it. But Batman says, hey, we know you didn't do it, right? And um, And right now, do we hammer them? Not yet, Huntress. We don't have enough. And then she's, you know, having an outburst and she says, Oh, come on. They declared this war and just went nuclear. What do they have to do? What do we? And then she says, We do nothing until something solid, something that will stick. All right. Um, so, yeah. yeah, Batman is just uh, giving uh, uh, Huntress, you know, no, it's, it's not much of a lecture, but, you know, telling how it is, right? Um, so he says, we are still vigilantes and we cannot take the bait. Uh, otherwise, you know, they are, pro we are, well, we're proving them right. And that's not what we want. And um, anyway, and then we see this cool shot inside the Batmobile with actually something on screen, like Oracle and meters and, and numbers and buttons. Like I said, Paul Galachi, man, is the man when it comes to detail. So... She found something, uh, Oracle found something about Project Afterlife. It's a secret FBI internal study on the viability of the agency after the Cold War. So I'm not going to tell everything, but, you know, you can read it if you want. But it says, basically, um, it's to ensure national security or the future of national security to FIA's continued existence more vital than ever, you know. Um, so it says that they are involved in terrorism and... Of the 10 potential scenarios, outline seven have since occurred with the future Bloodhawks at every scene. One Central American terrorist, after a coup stage with the FBI's aid, is now a dictator of his country, General Armado Ramosa. The very one. All right. So, basically, the FBI is committing terrorism just to create new dangers, new enemies, when none really existed. Hmm... 
How close is that to the truth, eh? Must be fake news. Um, just so we still need the agency. And so Congress will continue funding the black budgets. Giving the evidence I've uncovered, yes. So Batman says, do you have dirt on Redmond? None. He's still clean. Uh, so Batman says, well, I'm going to do a research. And says, why do you going to Central America, Robin? And the, pres the presidential palace of General Amado Ramosa. And that leads us to the last issue in the volume three. This is great. I love this. You know, I, like I said, it's deep, it's dark, it's intense. Um, no stupid jokes. It's just, oh man, it's just a lot to uncover here. A lot to unpack. I love it. It's really good. Guys, let me know what you think about this comic. Uh, 25 minutes in. It's too long. See you later. Bye-bye.